Hello, guys. Welcome to the show this afternoon. Now, listen. They're just getting one problem solved in the financial system. Like, it's almost like right at this point, you know, the old thing where there was a kid standing in front of the uh, dam, you know, or a dike. You know, I think it's a dike. I think the story goes the kid standing in front of a dike. And the water started to spurt out through a hole. So he stuck his finger in that hole, you know, and he stopped the water, you know. And, and then... It, then the water starts spurting out over there, so he stuck his finger in over there, you know? And then the water starts spurting out near his feet, so he stuck his toe in, you know? You can only go so far with this, you know? And so, Italy. Italian bonds. Bond yields are starting to rise in Italy. If the bond yields rise too high in Italy, Italy cannot service their debt. It's just as simple as that. So the European, uh, they've arranged it. So that the $41 billion they bought of Italian bonds. And you know Italian bonds are junk. But they're buying it. They've, European Central Bank's arranging it. And they've spent another $41 billion. Meanwhile, while they're doing that, India's bonds are starting to rise. It's like another hole springing in a leak in the dike. You know, it's going to come a point where they can't cover it all. Now, the bond yields in the United States, because the United States is considered to be one of the safer haven assets for, for the U.S. dollar, the bond, the bond yields in the United States are being kept low because a lot of buyers are coming in. They're, they're deeming it to be a safe haven asset, and they're buying up U.S. Treasuries because Treasuries yields rose kind of high. The 10-year in the U.S. Treasury rose to 3.25% or touched it, touched 3.25%. It since fell back. But we had a lot of bond purchases in the United States, which kept yields down. But, you know, overall, what's going to happen is yields are going to start rising. They're not going to be able to cover all this. We need to get in here and do this. And we need to open up the charts uh, right here. And let's take a look at what's going on. Uh, what we have is, is France has bought into the Italian bond market rather heavily. I mean heavily, I mean 260 billion euros worth. More than the French can cover if there's some sort of a crisis. And, and they'll be holding all this Italian debt that can actually become worthless. This would create a black hole with France. So we have in this article, it says, Le Maire says, Italian recession threatens France's economy. I think it's doing more than threaten France's economy. It could drag France's economy down with Italy. And so we could get France and Italy going down together because they got so much Italian debt. Uh, the uh, F French finance minister tells Bloomberg, uh, it says the European and global economic environment has become far more threatening for France in recent months with the recession in Italy. A particularly serious concern, the French finance minister said. Risks are building up from the threat of fresh U.S. trade tariffs to an uncertain Brexit, to an abrupt slowdown in Germany, and the domestic dip difficulties with the Yellow Vest protests. Well, you know, the Yellow Vest protests haven't went away. Basically, it's going to cost France an extra 11 billion dollars, or 11 billion euros, which is 15 billion, or close to 15 billion dollars, to try to pacify these French protesters. But the thing about it is, is there's still an awful lot of discontentment there. And these people that are discontentment, they're, they're pacifying them with 11 billion euros. But I'm going to tell you what, that discontentment is only raging further. And it's growing. And yes, it might start dying down. It's only, it'll only die down for the very reason that these people, after a number of weeks go by, they get bored with marching in the street, you know, and they, they, they say, well, I'm going to stay home. Like you might get the typical guy that's been yellow vest and say for the last 13 weeks, you know, and, and he says, well, I'm going to stay home this weekend. I'm going to have something. To, I'm going to have a few beer, you know, or, or kick my heels up this weekend. So he doesn't show up at the marches or whatever. It's that sort of a thing. And that's the reason why it's settling back down again, you know, but the discontentment remains because even though he's staying home and having his beer this weekend, he ain't going to go out marching because he just went out for 10 weeks in a row. He's staying home and having his beer. That doesn't mean he's not discontented. That just means that he's been doing it week after week after week after week, 
and it doesn't it seems like that 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 it's just going on and on forever and after a while people get bored with it you know it's just natural human uh tendency but that doesn't mean the discontentment's not there and this thing could explode later if if something triggers it to explode later so that's still there and at the same time this recession in italy has set off alarm bells in paris the two countries economies are deeply intertwined they share companies and multiple sectors of annual trade flows of around 90 billion dollars a year that these trade flows between italy and france 90 billion euros a year you know he says this is what the french minister says he says don't underestimate the impact of the italian recession he said in an in interview with bloomberg he says we talk a lot about the brexit but we don't talk much about an italian recession that will have significant impact on growth in europe and can impact france because it's one of our most important trading partners his comments were on wednesday it adds to warnings about the French economy, which showed relative resilience at the end of last year, even amid the impact of violent protests. Uh, it recorded 0.3% growth in the fourth quarter. Well, that's basically nothing. And you know that they can fudge those GP, GDP numbers, you know, and 0.03% growth is practically nothing. So it's probably, in my mind, they're probably contracting slightly at this point right what would happen if italy starts to get in trouble and all of a sudden there's a 260 billion euro black hole in the economic system so it says 0.3 percent growth in the fourth quarter compared with stagnation in germany and a second straight contraction in italy so see that's how they measure a recession you have to have two consecutive contractions but you know why we've been in a recession for a long time in a lot of places in the world and they fudge the numbers with the GDP so that it doesn't look like we're in a recession because it's easy to do that they they uh, they uh, it has to do with the uh, uh, the amount of uh, uh, of uh, when they rate the amount of uh, uh, I'm having a brain fart sorry but it's uh, it's got to do with inflation, the inflation numbers and stuff, and, and they can actually manipulate the GDP numbers. It says the broad weakness of the European economy is already pushing the European Central Bank to rethink its planned exit from the stimulus and consider new long-term loans for banks. So, see, the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, he said it back when he said whatever it takes. They're going to have to keep that up. It seems like once you actually start with stimulus programs and you start with quantitative easing and stuff like that, you can't really quit. It's like you go, it's like a drug addict, and if he quits, he's going to go with, through withdrawal symptoms, and that's the way with the economy. If if they start to quit, then the co the economy starts to deflate, you know. And the problem with that is, it's like the deflation fuels more deflation. It's like a perpetual cycle. It's almost like a, a flywheel on an engine when it gets spinning, you know. The momentum keeps it spinning, and it spins all the faster, you know. And then it's hard to slow it down at a certain point. And that's the way with deflation. It says, Le Maire said he'll meet with his Italian counterpart, Giovanni Tria, in Paris next week, where the two will discuss the economic situation. Tensions have run high between the countries in recent weeks amid sniping between President Emmanuel Macron and leaders of the Italian's coalition parties. Uh, what that was all about was Macron was awfully mad at the leaders of the Italian coalition parties because they actually met with the leaders of the Yellow Vest movement. And <laughs> he was so mad that France withdrawed its ambassador to Rome. That's how mad Emmanuel Macron was, you know. Uh, it says, it's always better to have dialogue and discussions rather than confronting each other, Le Maire said. We are all united whether we like it or not. Well, you know what? The truth is, we're headed for a divided Europe. The European Union's days are numbered at this point. And it's all about money. 
It's all about the euro. The euro is like a patchwork quilt that wasn't put together properly. They didn't use the right the thread or whatever. And it's coming apart at the seams. You know, it wasn't put together properly originally to begin with. He says, I'm following this debate, debate very closely and things are moving, he said. France has already announced 10 billion euros, that's $11.4 billion of extra stimulus in, a, in an attempt to appease the yellow vest protesters. So that's going to come right out of their budget. And do you think that's going to satisfy the yellow vest protesters? I think not. I think they're just, just as discontented now as they were before they got the $11.4 billion of extra stimulus. Because there's deeper issues here, you know. It says, if France needed to respond to a deeper downturn, it would rely upon supply-side reforms that Macron has championed, Le Maire said. <laughs> Anything that's championed by Macron, as far as I'm concerned, is only going to make more trouble, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. That's, that's, it seems like, it seems like, uh, anyway, I'm going to not say any more about that. So, listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye for now.